Nick, thanks. Childhood should be a carefree time of life without any worry. However, pediatricians and mental health professionals are sounding an alarm when it comes to children and anxiety. Yeah, experts now say children should be screened for anxiety by the age of eight and continue that through the age of 18. Dr. Sarah Getch, a psychologist with Kansas City University, is joining us this morning to talk about this disturbing warning for parents and young kids. So, Dr. Getch, why, do you, why now? Why are doctors and mental health professionals sounding the alarm on this particular issue right now? Well, this has been something that pediatricians and families alike have been talking about for quite some time. In fact, uh, pediatricians have been screening for depression since 2016, and so this is sort of lagged behind in that way. Many pediatricians are already screening for anxiety, but oftentimes anxiety can be a little bit quieter than depression. Sometimes it's internalized a little bit more. So screening early can be really important for early intervention. And what does this entail, an anxiety screening for a young child? I know, it, it shouldn't actually cause any anxiety that right. we are screening for anxiety. <laughs> uh, but what it would entail is usually a questionnaire that parents and children are filling out. They're being asked in the office. If you're working with a psychologist, it would be a little bit more in depth. So there would probably be a standardized questionnaire. And then there would also be an interview with the child and an interview with the parents. So pretty simple. And Dr. Ketch, I think I know the answer to this, or at least I have my own theories uh, on this, but like, are my kids more likely to be anxious and depressed than maybe I was when I was uh, a young kid? I, I have a feeling that the answer is yes. I have, that is a really, really great question. And of course, I'm gonna tell you that we don't exactly know the answer. Mm -hmm. We don't know if they're more prone, but certainly we know that they're reporting it at much higher rates. And so uh, if we look at data from 20, uh, 2007, we see that since then in 2019, anxiety, rates of anxiety and depression increased by 60% amongst our adolescents. And so whether or not that's a reporting issue, you know, there's just more reporting or they're more prone, we don't exactly know. Uh, but we do know that a lot of things have changed uh, over the last 20, 40 years uh, that are impacting our adolescents. Yeah, just social media, the right. pandemic, um, you know, again, I'm not a scientist, but it seems yes. to me, you know, there's a lot going on. Yes. So, you know, the social media component has been identified as maybe being problematic, but the other sort of bigger pieces that I would be paying attention to as a parent are sleep. We mm -hmm. see that our teens are getting much, much less sleep than they used to. Uh, exercise, much less exercise, and then also face-to-face -face socialization. Those big variables, I think, I would be paying attention to as a, as a parent. Mm, that's good to note. Uh, what, what else can parents do to prevent anxiety, um, especially if, you know, if their kids aren't saying, like, hey, mom, I'm feeling right. this way or that way? What can you do? I think it depends on the age level. So if they're really little, then I would probably be helping them label their feelings. I would probably help them sort of tell a story about how they're feeling and sort of meet them where they're at developmentally. As they get into being adolescents, sometimes they might clam up a little bit. So oftentimes we will talk about using a technique called mirroring. So the parent will say, you know, when I was, uh, I once heard a story about this, this, and this, and uh, this person felt this way. And then the child has an opportunity to sort of say, oh, I, I felt something similar. I remember uh, feeling that way myself. And then uh, as they get older, even, I think creating time to listen is going to be really important. I also think asking directly is super important about how they're feeling, especially if we're going to be talking about assessing for any type of suicidal thoughts, we need to ask directly. Uh, and then finally, if they won't talk to you and they want to talk to somebody else, that's great. That's okay. Let's find them somebody that they can talk to. Yeah, that's very good advice. Yeah. Dr. Getch, thank you so much. I think this is such an important topic, especially during Mental Health Awareness Month. We appreciate yes, it. Yes, thank you both so much. Thanks. Right. Kathy? He doesn't fit me.